Today we're doing um, high register, in particular playing softer in the high register without um, any sort of tension creeping in. Uh, so I've got a couple of exercises for that. And after that, I will be answering some questions. So if you have any questions on your mind at any point, um, please just write it in the chat and I can check it and then try and answer it during that um, section. I'll try and leave a good chunk of time because I've got a couple of questions already uh, on the go. Um, so I'll be able to answer those as well. Um, yeah, so let's start first of all, just warming up um, with some high register sort of exercises. Um, now for the high register to come out cleanly and with ease, we need to make sure that the air direction is up and high. Um, so that involves the lower lip going forward with the, this lower jaw here. So we need that flexibility that we've been working on. Um, a good exercise to practice that is actually to, so you have your flute like this, like normal, you just turn your head joint round so it's facing the floor, a little bit plate like that. Um, so it's like 180 degrees round. And then you just put that on your top lip, okay? And then see if you can get a sound by blowing up towards the hole. So your, your top lip stays quite still, but your bottom lip is able to move um, with it. See if you can get any sort of sound. And to get an even better sound than the first kind of uh, sort of sounds that you get, you have to make sure that when you're blowing up, that the the embouchure is nice and round and the air is focused. Um, I've probably said that a hundred times this uh, week, but focused air is uh, uh, everything. So um, that will give you the best sound, even with this funny exercise. And it's a good sort of party trick. Uh, just put it on your top lip. If I don't focus here, doing like that, puffing, um, then you won't get um, quite the sound that you would like. Um, so that actually just warms up doing that without having to really think too much in a fluty way. It's, it's just a fun way to warm up. So you can try that. Um, let's now do another exercise, which is reverse harmonics. So we've done a lot of normal harmonics, starting from a, a fundamental in the lower register and then blowing faster with faster airspeed and blowing up and you get the next harmonics up. Um, this one works with uh, the high register fingering and you split it down as if you weren't blowing sort of fast enough for a note and it splits down. And then on purpose, you split it down and gradually come back up to that top note. Um, so some people call these ghost tones or reverse harmonics or something like that. And they're really useful. Um, and if you've got pieces, any sort of French piece, um, most of them end their first section on a very high note that's soft. And so these will help you with that. Uh, for example, Enescu, the, the last thing ends up on a top G, soft. Um, Gobert, Nocturne and Allegro, the Nocturne ends on a top F, I think. And in the Poulenc Sonata second movement, you've got a lot of high top Fs that are soft. So these, this exercise will help you with that uh, and every other high soft note. Okay, so what you have to do, let's start with fingering an E flat 
so the high E flat, so everything's down. And so, first of all, just blow very slow and see if you can get this tone. Okay, so it should sound that, around that pitch. And then the next one above that, let's see if we can go from that low one to the next one. So that's the second one. And then there's a third one, which will be the E flat itself. So let's go from the low one to the second one to the third one. Okay, so let's try that one more time. And this time, see if you can keep the dynamic relatively soft. So don't allow the sound to get loud. Okay, so let's try it again from that split ghost tone at the bottom. Okay, so that will help you get there without forcing the sound. There's um, ways that you can practice that. Um, so you practice the sort of elements of how you use your air separately. So you can practice just with the air speed. So how you make the air faster and slower internally. And also then just practice the, the jaw and the lower lip without doing that. So let's do it the first way where we're just doing air speed. Um, and keep this the same. So keep that in the low register setup for your lips and only do it internally for the air speed, just making the air faster. So do you remember when we did releasing the air and we want to blow faster, you just felt that little bit more pressure to get the air up, but there's no element of push or squeeze. It's just a increasing the airspeed. So let's keep the lips the same and do that, those three notes. Okay, now let's do it the other way around. So we're only doing lips, but not in the, the stomach area. So keep that the same, but change here. And you'll notice that when you do them separately, neither of them sound as good as when you put them back together. So now do lips and internal airspeed. So we're swinging the jaw forward, we're bringing the lips slightly close together, and we're increasing the airspeed from the stomach area. And that will give you your best top note now without any effort really. So let's try that again, same fingers. Now let's go up a note. So let's finger top E and do exactly the same thing. So just one, two, and three, thinking of both of those elements working together. Good, that one, one more time. let's add an element to it. So when we do the slur, let's do a one where we're doing puh, the, the poo, Winnie the Pooh attack on each one. 
So we'll do a slur one, a poo attack one, and then we'll do slur again, just to train the embouchure even more. So let's do slurred. Okay, and then slurred again. Okay, good. Let's go up a note. So we're going to finger top F, do exactly the same, slurred, and this time we're going to re articulate the top F. So you get to the top F and then bing, 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 just keep playing it and feeling that ease of um, attack. Okay, so it really trains your lips um, and everything else to remember how to get that note. Let's keep going. One of the questions actually was how to get a good top F sharp. Um, and it, if you do this exercise, it will definitely help. But there are some little tricks as well for F sharp. You can put down the C sharp key in the foot joint instead of the E flat key. Um, and that just makes it slightly easier. And if you find that that's too sharp, you can then just put down a slight bit of the middle fingering for F sharp. So that's usually a flat fingering for F sharp. But if you slide off and then put that down instead, the C sharp key, that should be quite in tune. Uh, so let's, you can try that fingering if you like, or just the standard one. So let's have a go. Good. And keep remembering when you want to re-articulate to think from above with the airstream. So try not to approach from below when you're re-articulating so that air can drop in rather than struggle in. Okay, let's try top G. Again, there's a little cheat for that one. Uh, it might not work for everybody, but sometimes I put down the C natural key, the top G, and that gives it a little bit more shine on the note. Um, and it's a bit easier to, to come out softly, um, but it might not work for you. So that one or that one. Let's try top G. So those are some high register exercises that I do quite a lot. You can then, once you've done those reverse harmonics, an excellent exercise I find is from the Moyes Tone Development through Interpretation book. It's on page 76 and it's, it starts with a going up to top G. Notice that it's always soft and then you get up gradually higher and higher. So you could try that exercise out after doing some reverse harmonics and just keep making sure that it's it's you're doing it softly um, without gripping in the, the lips, but just guiding the air up um, with just the right amount of tension in the lips themselves. So I hope that helps. Um, okay, so let's get on to some questions. Um, I've done high F sharp. Yellow tone. I got asked about yellow tone. Um, so if anybody's um, got Trevor Wise tone book, 
he talks about tone colors, um, yellow, purple, and blue, I think. And so for yellow, he's talking more of a sort of pale, pale sound that doesn't have a lot of um, harmonic content in the sound. Um, so the way I like to think of colors is just to think of your vowel shape in inside your mouth. So if you say ah with an ah vowel, compare that now to when you say ooh, and go between the two and hear how the the color changes. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah. So you feel one is more resonant perhaps than the other. And the R for me has a little bit more depth. So you can practice that. And then the other vowel you could use is E, which is more penetrating and direct in its, in its color. So the yellow one is, is yeah, good for um, very sort of nice, soft, where you don't want to have a, an oboe-like quality. Um, but you want something a little bit more f traditionally fluty, like La Pre Midi um, stuff. So you could practice a, a simple melody all on the ooh vowel. So just thinking of the ooh. Um, let's, let's just try an F major scale, the EJ1. Da -da 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 -de -da 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 -dum, but with an ooh sound. So keep it soft. Keep the air flowing out. Don't let the air get too slow. Um, keep the air coming out. So let's try just F major. So that was the OO, very gentle. Let's try and change that vowel now into something a little bit darker. So think of an R instead. So just, just the feeling internally, not the lips themselves, but just the feeling that's inside. Okay, so you... It might not come across so well over the the internet, but for me, when I'm in my room, I can hear that the sound has just opened up a little bit more and there's a slightly richer quality to it. Um, so that's what I would do for a hollow tone. And you could use the tone development book or Moyes 24 studies to practice those things. He's got the whole section um, at the beginning, which is low register. Um, so you could pick any of those melodies. Um, so the one that I quite like is number four. Just keeping it very, um, without putting too many harmonics in the sound, just getting that sort of fundamental sound only, um, thinking of ooh, and keeping the air flowing out. Um, so that's what I would do for that one. What else have we got there? Is it possible that you could talk about preventing strain in your hands and wrists when you play the flute? Okay. Um, so it's difficult to know what causes the tension in your hands, because everybody might have a different root of tension, if that makes sense. So if you, you might actually feel something that's, it's actually originating from the shoulders. If you're holding your, your shoulders when you play, that could be causing tension through the hat, through the arms, into the wrist, and then the fingers, because it's all connected there. Um, it might just, it might be the positioning of your neck. Um, so I would suggest keep monitoring yourself in the mirror when you practice. 
Um, if it is more localized and you, you feel like it is just here, it could be that you haven't quite balanced your flute um, to somewhere where your your hands and your wrists aren't having to work so super hard to keep your flute up. So if you remember that you've got your balance points of your right thumb, your left index finger, and then the chin here, the other fingers can just float on the top and no pressure really is needed there. So if you can hold your flute without it rolling about, just with the thumb and just with the index finger, that should give you a good indication if you're balancing your flute well enough. Um, if it does that, because that happens because we've got a lot of key work at the back, and so it's heavier, and so it will roll back unless it's angled and balanced well. Okay, so if you can keep it there without the other fingers, and then just put your fingers down, and then you feel a little bit more ease in the fingers and the wrists. So when you do your scales or finger exercises, <clears throat> try not to let any of those then grip or don't let the flute roll back or too far forwards. Um, just keep that balance there. Okay, sorry. <clears throat> Does that answer your question? Does that make any sense? Um, let me know if that, that helps. So just try some scales with very light fingers and um, steady angle of your flute. Do you have any go-to drills <coughs> for people who have had break? Strength, flexibility, neck. Um, well, yeah, I think some of the exercise that we've done this week in the warm-ups are quite good for getting back into the flute playing. Particularly tones, I find are a good getting your air steady. Breathing exercises are are really good. <clears throat> um, pitch essential, I think, to get the this working again. Um, and the shakuhachi exercise, even though it's quite difficult at first, it's a really good indicator that you're blowing in the right place with a really good air speed. Um, so I'd say those exercises I would do uh, after a week or two off or longer. I don't know how longer your friend has had off, um, but those are always good ones for me. Um, all right, that's those. Got another one here, tonguing in the low register. So this is often, I found, I used to find this quite difficult and the notes would often split up because if you try to tongue like you do in the higher register into the lower register, we'll often get shooting up of notes. Um, and that's often, I think, because the lips here get too tight and so the air hasn't got enough space really to, to be angled in the right place. And so what we've got to remember with low register is that angle and that the angle of the air has to be consistent on every note that you articulate. So it, it might be good on the first one, but maybe the second one, the angle's changed. So a good thing that I practice is number 10 or something similar from Moyes 24 studies. So you see that variation there that has all the low Cs and all the low notes in it. But what I do instead of tonguing it first is to do a very sort of slow vibrato, so a pulse without tonguing. So it's something like. And I make sure that when I do that vibra slow vibrato, that the note's not actually splitting. So I can give it a lot of 
uh, a pulse, but I don't let the, the pitch of it shoot up. And then when you add the tongue back to that, um, you obviously have to correct the pitch. So you're going do, 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 like that. Um, So you have to do a little bit of dual movement for each each note. Um, so maybe we could practice together just doing a vibrato of, let's say, let's do eight vibratos on each note coming down from a C chromatically all the way down to low C. So we'll do eight. Whoa, 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 and then keep us going down, breathing where you need to. Okay, so let's try that all together. and you'll find when you're doing that you have to be super relaxed in the jaw as you get further and further down so if you start to feel tension somewhere along there that's gonna happen okay so try and get the vibrato to work so that's your airstream for the articulation and then you can do a faster vibrato now so we could do let's do six but quick so all from the the stomach Okay, and then, so that would be good for your triple tonguing. Double tonguing, we could do it eight, but fast. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's try it fast on an eight. Okay, so if that never splits, you know that you're blowing in the right place. Um, then you just have to tongue at the beginning of each one of those. And when it's very fast like that, you don't really have to think about correcting the pitch so much. Da -da 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 -da. So we have a connection of air and it's consistent. Um, so that's how I would approach tonguing in the low register. Just get the, the sound first with out the tongue there and don't let the tongue change that angle so often when we even if you blow on your hand you blow in one place and then you just do the try and do the same thing but with a instead you'll notice if you don't think about it the air will just automatically go a little bit higher with the two um just simply how that's working internally and how your lips form. Um, so it's getting that angle back in where, it, where it's going to make the sound. Um, and I hope that answers that question. Um, at least give that a go and see. Uh, that high register exercise is brilliant. Oh, cool. Um, okay, so don't have any other questions. Um, 
Does anybody have any more questions right now? So I've got, those are some things that you can take away for the weekend. Um, high register, practicing with different colors, um, articulation, lots of moise. He writes quite a lot of good books. And um, yeah, if you have any other questions, I'll hopefully answer them next week. And thank you for watching and thank you for asking questions because that is a big relief nobody just sat there in silence so that's helps me a lot so please do ask away write comments um check out the other videos that we did um over the week uh, and if you have questions about what we've done so far perhaps the shakuhachi exercise or whatever just let me know um and have a good weekend, and I'll see you next week.